and what I had prepared was something way ahead of where we are in the calendar of events for this week. But I know that whatever is prepared, we bless your heart. I received the notification that I should speak about Jesus on the Mount of Olives. This evening I realized I should be speaking about the challenge Jesus received when questioned about his authority. But I will speak on what is prepared and see how I will get in a little comment or two about where I should be speaking from. Luke 22, 39 to 45 tells us about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is, this story is a little ahead of where we are this week. At the start of this Holy Week, we learned that it was while Jesus was by the Mount of Olives near Bethany that he sent two of his disciples to untie an ass which he rode to Jerusalem. While in Jerusalem, he taught in the temple during the daytime. And some of his talk in the temple disrupted some of the leaders, the religious leaders. Who question his authority. But in the evening, he would retreat to the Mount of Olives. During the second visit to the Mount, Jesus answered his disciples' question about the end of days. In, in religion, they call it eschatology. And you see that in Luke 21, 5 to 36. It is one of the clearest passage on the doctrine of the last days, giving us a detailed picture of the tribulation and the second coming of Jesus. However, the dramatic events of that last week culminated in the events of the Passion. In anticipation of Jesus' arrest and the betrayal, Jesus returns to the Mount of Olives one last time. His third. He returns to the place where King David fled from his son Absalom, who wanted to dethrone him. He came to the place where King Solomon worshipped idols, where the prophets Ezekiel and Zephaniah prophesied, and there he himself prayed taught and prophesied. Jesus chose this hill for his final moment before being betrayed. The Mount of Olives is one of the most fascinating places found in scripture. 
regarded as sacred. It is mentioned in both the Old and the New Testament. It has been said that horror and hope collide on the Mount of Olives. There, Jesus prayed before his betrayal and before his crucifixion. It is also from there that Jesus ascended into heaven. Some claim or believe that Jesus will return to that place according to what Zechariah wrote in 14 and verse 4. But Jesus tells us that all of us, whether we are in Australia or in Canada or in Green Island or Greenland, all of us will know that he is back. But where is the Mount of Olives? The Mount of Olives is a mountain range that is made up of three peaks located on the eastern border of the city of Jerusalem. The highest peak is 2,684 feet and offers a scenic view of old Jerusalem. The eastern side of the slope is at the beginning of the Judean desert and it separates the Temple Mount in present Jerusalem from the desert. The Mount of Olives was named from the olive groves that lined the hillside. To this day, there is an olive tree believed to be over 2,000 2, years old on that hillside. It is also called the Mount of Anointment because of the pressing of olives for the oil that was used to anoint kings in the Old Testament. It is significant and symbolic that Jesus likely knelt under the covering of olive trees and pray in the garden of Gethsemane, located on the Mount of Olives, just before his betrayal. Imagine the King of Kings be pressed so that you and I might do his rule in our lives. Many Jewish people throughout history have requested to be buried on the Mount of Olives. There are many graves there. They might have the belief that Jesus would return on that same spot from which he ascended into heaven, according to Acts 1 and verse 11. But it is not where you are buried that will determine your seeing or meeting Jesus on his return. But also how you live his will for your lives. How I live his will for my life. Millions of visitors visit the Mount of Olives every year. Has the thought ever come to your mind to walk where Jesus walked? Or even to do some of what Jesus did? Let me get to the main course though. I share with you five significant things to know about the Mount of Olives in the Bible. Firstly, the Mount of Olives is a place of fulfilled prophecies. The prophet 
Zephaniah, Zechariah, sorry, prophesied that Jesus would ride on a colt of an ass, the fold of a donkey, into Jerusalem. This can be found in Zechariah 9, verse 9. It was from the Mount of Olives that the procession started. Matthew 21, 1 to 11, tells the story of Jesus sending two of his disciples to fetch a cold time. They were to untie it. They found it and all went as Jesus said it would. Verse 4 says, This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. David the psalmist prophesied about Jesus' betrayal, which took place at Gethsemane. This can be read from Psalm 41, verse 9. It says, Yea, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. This verse is viewed in the New Testament as a prophecy. Of Jesus' betrayal. Judas, one of Jesus' twelve disciples, had spent three years learning from Jesus, traveling and eating with him, and handling the dances for the group. Eventually, Jesus, Judas, who knew Jesus extremely well, betrayed him. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you have to give wrong evidence? When Jesus, when Judas realized what he had done and that Jesus was about to be condemned, he took back to the elders and leaders of the church the third pieces of silver, saying, I have sinned. I am responsible for the blood of an innocent man. He knew Jesus extremely well and knew that he was innocent without sin. Of all that we know about Jesus, can we say we are not betraying him in how we share his love to others? Jesus faced abandonment. His own disciples scattered when he was arrested in the garden on the Mount of Olives. Zephaniah also prophesied some 520, sorry, Zechariah also prophesied some 520 years before Christ that this would happen when he spoke about that in his book chapter 13 verse 7 strike the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered these were words spoken or repeated by Jesus just before his betrayal and abandonment, which Matthew 
write in chapter 26 from 31 onward. It was prophesied and came to God. This should help us, modern man, to compromise our belief in Jesus as our Savior. Yet, there is one prophecy to be fulfilled. Jesus, after his resurrection, ascended from the Mount of Olives, indicating that he will return to receive those who truly trust him and accept his redeeming grace and live according to his will. Are you? Am I? The second thing I want to share about the Mount of Olives is that the Mount of Olives is a place of prayer. The Mount of Olives is a place of prayer. After the last supper, Scripture tells us that Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives. The phrase, as usual, tells us that the Mount of Olives was a place Jesus often went to pray. It was a place where Jesus poured out his heart to God, to God the Father, to God his Father. Jesus knew the burden he was to bear. The sins of the whole world, yours and mine, past, present, and future, sins of omission and sins of commission. The horror of his rejection of him being taken for a ride. For the many who would disown him, for those who would dishonor him, including all who he came to save. Many in the whole soul of faith who serves their own interests and not the will of God are part and part of those who Jesus considered while he was in the garden and prayed about it. Just like he knew where the ass was Time. And the fact that his owner would allow him to use it, he knows our very hearts. He knows our inclination. He knows all our intention. Our minds. Our indulgences. Nothing can be hidden from him. He knew very well what was in the minds of those who questioned his authority. He knew their speech. And he didn't play to their name. He knew what he was about. And he was consistent. While in the garden he was burdened with all these and more. Imagine the horror he was facing. Genesis 6 and verse 5 tells us that God was grieved that he had made man when he saw how man's wickedness was great on the earth. And that inclination of 
the thoughts of his heart was only evil. Imagine them. Imagine them. With no evil in your heart, but only good, without sin. And you were to receive the punishment of the unjust. You and I would certainly crumble. But Jesus took to the garden on the Mount of Olives and prayed. He was a man of prayer. He linked with his father very often. Do you have a place to go where you can pour out your heart's feeling to God? Jesus shows us how. If we are to truly follow him, our prayer life must be consistent with his. If Jesus had special places where he went to pray and communed with his Father, it makes sense that you and I need these places in our lives as well. Thirdly, the Mount of Olives is a place of hope. Both Jews and Christians alike view the Mount of Olives as a sacred place of hope. The Jewish people believed that the Messiah would come to Israel on the Mount of Olives. As believers, when we look to the Mount of Olives, we are reminded of the hope we have in Jesus. The Messiah came. He is the source of our redemption. There is no other soul. However, we also have the hope of his second coming when he will right every wrong. Jesus gave the promise to his disciples as he ascended into heaven that he will return. Are we ready for his return? It is sure. It is our only hope. Our salvation will only be completed then. Be ready. The fourth thing I want to say about the Mount of Olives is that the Mount of Olives is a place of redemption. Jesus suffered not only on the cross or where he received the forty lashes, or where he was spot on, but also in the garden of Gethsemane, on the Mount of Olives, as he wrestled with what was to come, the price of sin was used. It was a crown of great suffering, and yet. As we look to what was accomplished by Christ's obedience, we see the glory of our redemption and that of the receptive world on God. The beauty of the forgiveness of our sins. The Mount of Olives reminds us that Christ was paid, Christ has paid. The price for all redemption. We do not merit it. But through the grace of God, we can 
divine redemption. So when we feel hurt or betrayed, we can look to the bounty of olive and remember that Christ was hurt and betrayed as well. But the Father has redeemed his suffering and he will redeem ours as well. So my friend, grow in relationship and fellowship with God. Finally, the Mount of Olives is a place of victory. Just as Jesus rose from the grave victoriously and ultimately ascended into heaven, the prophet Zechariah reminds us that one day Christ's feet will stand on the Mount of Olives. East of Jerusalem on the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley. And that one day the Lord will be King of the earth. Our King Jesus has won the victory. He is our triumphant king who will return just as he said and rule over all him and earth. He will separate the sheep from the goat and his judgment will stand. Where will we stand? Where will you stand? Where will I stand? A deep valley will divide the good from the evil, and no one will cross over. Now is the time to determine where you are deep. The Mount of Olive reminds us that just as our Savior came, as the Old Testament prophets predicted, prophesy so he will come again to rule in righteousness and justice. As you contemplate the Mount of Olives and consider it and all that it symbolizes in scripture and all the events that took place there it must be a good reminder that we are not in sacred places in our life. We need places where we can remember how God has fulfilled His promises to us. Special places where we can go regularly to pray and to meet with God. Places of hope. We are, we are where we are reminded, trust God with all our future. Places of redemption, where we remember how God has redeemed even the evil in our life. And turn it to good. And places of victory. Where we can remember that Christ is victorious. He has overcome evil. He has overcome the evil one. And so we can. And he will reign eternally. Praise the Lord for victorious King. Amen. Mr. Berry, for that lovely rendition, I know man who can. And when we heard Ethan Williams taking us to those ancient words, the Mount of Olives, where we found that Mount of Olives.
knowledge was a place of fulfilled prophecy, place of prayer, and a place of hope, a place of redemption, and a place of victory. And all these are relevant to our lives as we go through this whole At this time, they are going to stand and sing, I am thy true Lord.
as you as you draw near of the Lord, let our will be lost in thine. And as we commune as friends with friends, your peace will rest upon us. Because, Lord, we are trusting you. We thank the Lord for tonight. And we thank you for your message that was delivered to us, Lord. <coughs> Lord, all our hope and trust is in you. Because, Lord, you have done so much for us. I'm so glad that we give you thanks. So, merciful God, you guide and direct our steps as we depart from each other tonight. And let your will be done in our lives. And we never forget who you are and what you can do for us. Mm -hmm. Benediction. The Lord bless you.